May I now request Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to please come forward and make a formal request to our chief guest for the special convocation address. Professor Yogesh Singh, please. मैं मुख्य अतिथि माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति महोदय से अनुरोध करता हूं कि वे दीक्षांत उद्बोधन प्रस्तुत करें प्रोफेसर योगेश सिंह Vice Chancellor, University of Delhi. Professor Sri Prakash Singh, Director, South Delhi Campus. Professor Payal Mago, Director, Campus of Open Learning. Dr. Vikas Gupta, Registrar. I must recognize presence of a proud parent here, drawn from my fraternity also. Justice. Chakradhari Saran Singh Ji, Honorable Chief Justice of Odisha High Court, an alumnus of this university, and a proud parent of one who is receiving received already degree. I must make reference to your unofficial ambassador, from whom I learned over the years how excellent Delhi University is. Manye Suresh Ji Jain. <laughs> National Organizing Secretary, Bharat Vikas Prishad. I can recollect incidents by dozens when he narrated the glorious performance of the university and its students. Distinguished faculty, audience, and my dear friends, young friends, good morning and warm greetings to all of you. When Vice Chancellor says good morning, the ecosystem is very different. I, I don't look as young as he does, but then he's not as young as he looks. As Chancellor, I am extremely delighted to be with you all on the centenary convocation of University of Delhi. For me, a moment to ever cherish. Congratulations to the graduating students, their parents, their friends, and the members of the faculty on this milestone occasion. What a monumental event. The degree awarded, I'm told, will have a host of new embellishments, most impactful being the student's mother's name and your color photograph. As a male member of the society, I'm trying to stabilize. I had the good fortune to give medals I was looking for some boys also. Their number was yes. I told the last recipient that by getting four medals, you have slightly retrieved the situation for us. <laughs> the medal ceremony here reminded me of Kartavipat on 26 January, 75th Republic Day Parade. Girls, your gender was in full command. It is in full command here as well. And I can tell you the world will change as never before. The historic step taken by the Indian Parliament in September 2023, giving one third reservation to half of the humanity women in Lok Sabha and state legislatures. Imagine qualitative 
cutting as policy making when women will be present in lok sabha and state legislatures more than one third because one third is reserved my very special congratulations to this gender the vice chancellor has been very particular the degree is fortified with 17 unique security features similar to currency notes making duplication difficult friends this reflects our technological adaptability and our technological prowess <clears throat> my vision is all right i can see a soothing difference also in the dress code which is more aligned to our culture i can make out from a distance <clears throat> friends this centenary convocation in the 75th year of our republic is much beyond just being a ceremony it is a launch pad for a soul this secure launch pad will propel you not just into new destinations but to new heights fueled by the nectar you have gathered here in this great university friends this nectar is in the bonds of friendship forged in the hallowed precincts of this institution in late night study sessions i am sure several thoughts must be fleeting in your mind even machine learning will not be able to diagnose it the time you have spent the evenings the late night interactions the thought provoking ideas you shared you'll always remember laughter there have been moments i'm sure for you to engage in laughter to laugh at your friends and we laughed at also memorable moments you never cherish them you must have had many shared experiences triumphs certain setbacks highs and lows and challenges all these in togetherness have shaped you what you are today ready and prepared to take a leap in the larger world this nectar is in intellectual growth the knowledge you have acquired that drives your curiosity but let me give a suggestion to you a cautionary one your learning doesn't end with being recipient of degrees you are ever to engage in learning learning is lifelong and that is our commitment to humanity friends what i indicated these are not just memories they are indelible imprints on your heart and mind and soul these are the cornerstones stones of your future i would make one appeal to you i have seen more years than you have please ever nurture the bonds generated here the context you have picked here with the alma mater they should be continually growing both for the alma mater and your friendships friends you walk out as alumni of this great university with firm determination to make yourself your parents your friends the alma mater and the nation ever proud as you take this leap i took this leap the vice chancellor took this leap the honorable chief justice took leap but when we took that leap we took a jump in a system this could have been less challenging but it was very very challenging on occasions painfully challenging but now you will be entering into wholesome enabling ecosystem this awaits you with full warmth this allows you to fully expand your talent to fructify your aspirations a great change friends as you stand on this momentous occasion let me assure you out of conviction 
and experience the India awaits you. That India is not just welcoming you, but actively facilitating you, enabling you. The India that awaits you rightly boasts of an exciting ecosystem, earning you for your talent, innovation, and passion. You can unleash them as you want, as per your aptitude and inclination. Friends, this is a nation transformed. The transformation is for all to see. It's a ground reality. Ready to propel you towards your dreams, let me paint a picture of this nation today, the launch pad to Bharat at 2047. Equality before law. And mind you, friends, my young friends in particular, equality before law is quintessential to democracy. There can be no democracy if there is no equality before law. I'm indicating the big change you'll find when you step out. Equality before law is no longer just a constitutional ideal. It is an acknowledged reality. Those once supremely confident, powerful, and thought they were impregnably protected, that category, they thought we were beyond the reach of law. They are in firm grip of law. This is a big change. <laughs> Unforceability and accountability to law is the new norm. Law-abiding citizens are in a bit mood, and those who are transgressors of law are on the run. This is current scenario in Bharat. Gone are the days, friends, my young friends, boys and girls. Gone are the days of patronage, nepotism, and favoritism. Now corruption is no longer passage to a contract and recruitment. And you know, corruption now is a passage to only one destination. You know it all. Patronage has yielded to merit and the law holds everyone accountable. The India that awaits you is a level playing field, a platform for you to rise based not on your lineage, not on patronage, not on nepotism, not on corruption, but it is based on talent and hard work. Nothing can be more rewarding for young, impressionable minds, boys and girls, than to have a level playing field you will have level playing field, you are having level playing field, and you have to reap the fruits of it. <laughs> Friends, corruption hits the vulnerable the most, the women the most, the weaker the most, and corruption had been bane of our society for too long. Now, the dark clouds of corruption that cast a shadow over our nation for a period far too long, have vanished. The sky now is clear of them. Power corridors were big ticket decisions used to be taken and are being taken. They were infested at one point of time with corrupt license agents. They extra legally leveraged the decision making. Nothing was possible without rooting your mechanism through them. And where are they? They are gone. Power corridors are now sanitized of corrupt elements. Opportunities can have only meaning when those who contend for those opportunities know we will be judged by merit. And what is the current scenario? Contemporaneous canvas of the society Opportunities are not determined by merit and not patronage. Governance in a democratic society is all important. What is the governance mechanism that decides your peace, your stability, your growth? Governance, rather than being an obstruction, now is enabling. There is no obstruction now. They enable you. It is open, accessible. And serves the people, serves the people in large, 
serves the people at large is not only for privileged few. This is the India you step into, a nation on the rise as never before, propelled by innovation and opportunity. Now, no more sluggish, tardy progress in infrastructure development. We have been sick and tired. A road taking 20 years for construction. A building taking that long decades. That is behind us now. No more sluggish, tardy progress in infrastructure development. Today, we stand tall with world-class infrastructure from highways that stretch across cities and villages, alike to railways that we are a wave of connectivity. And look at the kind of trains we have now. World class. Look at how time has been shortened when we visit one place to another because of seamless travel facilitated by world class roads. If I have to give you some instances of recent past, the new parliament building, the Bharat Mandapam and the Yesho Bhumi Convention Centers, all in recent months, are symbols of our nation soaring towards new heights. Friends, this is not just infrastructure. It is the foundation for your dreams to travel farther, faster than ever before. But progress is not quantifiable in looking at concrete and steel. It is about positive impacting and connecting every corner of our nation. And that is where technology steps in. The global institutions, we had suffered their observations for too long. They looked at our nation from a different perspective. We had seen those decades, people of my generation, not yours, where world institutions were always in cautionary mode, telling us what has to be done, how we are lacking, why we are not improving. They still do it with respect to other countries. But when it comes to India, the World Bank, the IMF, and the like, recognize our digital growth and well spread out technological penetration to the remotest of village and dhani. Rural connectivity has been transformative, bringing the power of information and opportunity to the last person. The digital divide is already behind us. Friends, as a nation, we may be powerful, but we have to be cognizant how the world looks at us. Is there a different perception of the world towards us? And on this international front, India has emerged impactfully as a global leader. Just to refer to one, yoga. It has been there with us for centuries. It has been there in our Vedas. It is fundamental to good health. It takes no money to adopt it. It is an ancient pr practice rooted in our civilization. We have made it a worldwide phenomenon. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's initiative at United Nations, supported by the largest number of countries in the shortest time, fructified in June 21, being declared as International Yoga Day by the United Nations. Friends, the world now recognizes Bharat and its soft diplomacy as a stabilizing force. G20 was a resounding success without fear of contradiction. G20 footfall was there in every state of the country and every union territory. We had achieved many big ticket achievements. Induction of the African Union in G20 is a game changer. European Union was already its part. The announcement of India, Middle East, Europe trade route will open vistas in commercial world, will facilitate both land and maritime trade. India during G20 summit, living up to our civilizational ethos, became 
prominent, effective, impactful voice of Global South for the first time. Friends, and my young friends know it more than I do, our digital payment systems like Unified Payment Interface, UPI, is steadily becoming globally acceptable. UPI payments are now accepted in Singapore, Malaysia, UAE, France, Nepal, UK, Mauritius, Sri Lanka, to name, just to name few. Friends, it is amply clear the world believes in us. The world takes us as a favorite destination of opportunity and investment. It is time for us to subscribe to this faith in all earnestness. A stand told today is what we see. Whenever we talk of Bharat, we talk of phenomenal growth, exponential rise. The India you are entering, friends, is not just changing, it is exploding with possibilities. India is significantly defining global order. And why not? We are home to one-sixth of humanity with a civilizational depth of over 5,000 years. And therefore, friends, my appeal to you all, particularly young boys and girls, time to come out of silos, shake untenable limitations, take your leap, for this is a nation reaching for stars and beyond. Friends, you are in a world where artificial intelligence solves problems we thought impossible, where quantum computing unlocks the secrets of the universe, where blockchain and machine learning are impacting communications and networking systems. This is not science fiction. It is the reality unfolding before you, awaiting your contributions. Let me slightly digress. A lady was a librarian. A male sovereignist went there and said, Ma'am, can I get a book? Money is stronger than woman. And the lady quickly responded, go to the fiction section. That I've seen today. Same about what I'm telling you today. I'm not referring to science fiction. I'm referring to areas where you can explore with your contributions, make difference for yourself, your families, friends, nation, and the world. India, friends, and I say it with great sense of pride and satisfaction, in the forefront of the revolution in disruptive technologies. We are not just talking about these technologies. We are investing billions in them, building the infrastructure and creating the opportunities. For whom? For young friends like you, boys and girls. You have to be architects of future by getting involved with these opportunities. The National Quantum Mission, and already 6,000 crores have been given for it, is just one example. We are one of the only seven nations in the world to focus on quantum computing, pushing the boundaries of this game-changing technology. Think of the possibilities that await you. Imagine tackling diseases, designing revolutionary materials, and unlocking the secrets of the universe, all this is within your reach. I'm telling you particularly because for a long time, our youth has entertained an idea that opportunities to them are limited in silos. No, multiple number of them are available elsewhere, as I've indicated. Friends, our commitment goes beyond the digital realm, the green hydrogen mission. Even today, I was reading in a newspaper, it has a potential to attract investment of six to seven lakh crores in the next couple of years. And imagine the far-sightedness of our policies, our visionary mechanism of the government. 19,000 crores have already been allocated for green hydrogen mission. Who will fill the gap? Young boys and girls, you only have to think out of the box, generate interest, Go after your aptitude and inclination. You can make the most of it for yourself and the nation. Our commitment goes beyond digital dream. 
the green hydrogen mission is paving the way for a cleaner greener future as a matter of fact our country has taken lead achieved more than developed nations in this particular field to save the planet imagine powering our cities just imagine industries and even vehicles with clean renewable hydrogen creating jobs and protecting our planet another opportunity waiting for your skill friends if you think space is beyond reach think again the historic landing of chandrayaan 3 is just the beginning <clears throat> the cosmos is ours to explore and india is leading the charge what a pride for me for you all for the entire nation our isro is putting satellites of other countries in the universe because good technology good value for them and that is why countries like us uk singapore avail our facilities my young friends these achievements are not just milestones they open doors doors for you to enter make most of the opportunities that await you i am referring to some of these to indicate the enormous opportunities that await you in multiple new vistas i find that there is some kind of deficit in our youth coming to know of these opportunities i would urge the vice chancellor to hold a special session let our youth know what opportunities await them in the changing bharat that is on way to becoming a vikshit bharat at 2047 friends do not limit yourselves to traditional paths shake the obsession and i mean it shake the obsession of competitive examinations being the only option friends competitive examination mechanism to secure a government job according to me and i firmly believe in it out of conviction is only one of the many certainly not the best one i would put it much lower because your capacity to contribute in other areas make the world and nation proud lies beyond it bharat has expectations from you friends not just as government servants but as innovators entrepreneurs and change makers our amrit kal is just beginning the launch pad for bharat at 2047 a future all of you will witness my young friends boys and girls some of us may not be around but that future i have no doubt will be scripted by you and india will be a global leader friends this is your moment you are the most critical stakeholders in governance you have persevered you have grown and now you are ready to embark on the next chapter of your journey i see not just a sea of faces but a sea of potential of talent of dreams waiting to be realized take a leap ecosystem is favorable enabling wholesome allows you to fully exploit your talent and potential to realize your dreams and aspirations well this will have some applause the recent constitutional prescription of reservation of one third of seats in lok sabha and state legislature for women is a epochal development it will geometrically and qualitatively improve our policies and governance this will be one of the major factors to take bharat at 2047 as global leader it is vindication and recognition that our nation thrives when everyone has the opportunity to contribute regardless of gender friends in the end all i want to say is 
that future belongs to those who dare to dream bigger, bolder, beyond the ordinary. Do not fear the failure. Never have fear of failure. Do not let the fear of failure hold you back. And trust me, the whole world, whole world agrees. Bharat, home to one-sixth of humanity today, is a land of hope and possibility for us and for others in the world. Just look at India's journey. I was reflecting a while ago. There was a time when rocket parts were being taken on a bicycle. You youngsters may not know, but you can go to Google, you know it. You'll see the photograph, rocket parts being taken on a bicycle. And now, other countries come to us because technologically we are sound. We give good value for money. We are putting their satellites in the space. We have dared to dream and we have achieved the impossible. Together, let us paint a vibrant picture of Amrit Kaal. Let your talent, passion, and unique perspectives be the brush strokes that shape a brighter tomorrow. Friends, this is new India. And this new India is your canvas. And the possibilities are endless, like space, never ending. I appeal you to ever keep national interest uppermost. It can't be optional. It's the only way. Our commitment to our nation can never be diluted. It has to be 100%, 24 into 7, all your life. We must take a sankalp. We will always believe in our nation. Take pride in being citizens of this great country. And we will ever be proud we are born on this land. Beware of those who have insatiable appetite to set afloat anti-national narratives. I'll reiterate. Beware of all those who have insatiable appetite, in a sense growing appetite, to set afloat, set afloat anti-national narratives. Beware of those who have ostrich stance to our exponential, phenomenal, economic, and development rise. Beware of those who are recipe for chaos when it comes to serve the nation. As discerning minds, most vital governance stakeholders, and precious demographic segment of the largest democracy, boys and girls, it is your obligation to neutralize all who, in designed strategic manner, engage in tenting and tarnishing our national image and slur our constitutional institutions. Remember, you all are vital segments of the marathon march to Bharat 2047. Success of it lies on your shoulders. I have every hope, optimism, and confidence. The nation will succeed because you cannot afford to fail. Friends, you are not only architects of your own destinies, but also of our shared future. Make your mark not just for yourselves, but for the nation and for the world, because we believe in one family, one earth, one future, the other way around. Boys and girls, I conclude. You hold the key to Vikshit Bharat at 2047. My hope and appeal, unlock it. Thank you so much.